Ladies and gentlemen, now joining us on the 182 News Podcast, graphic designer out of New York, Matt Schneff. Matt, what's up, dude? What's going on? Thanks for having me. No problem, man. Doing good. So Matt is the mastermind behind some really rad Hi, My Name is Mark designs. And I stumbled across your Instagram, I think it was a couple years ago at this point. Now, I don't know if you know this, the listeners know this, but Hi, My Name is Mark is my favorite brand in the world. I wear it literally (laughs) every single day. I still think I have the largest, uh, I'll call it Hymnim for short, Hymnim, Hi, My Name is Mark Tattoo on the planet. I'm still waiting for somebody to outdo me on that. It's going to take a full back piece, I think. Uh, It's my entire rib cage. And so I stumbled across your page and I was like, holy shit, this dude is making so many rad designs that I wear all the time. And I thought it would be cool to bring you on and kind of get your background, how you got into graphic design to begin with and then of course we'll get into what it's like working with uh hi my name is mark so if you don't mind um give us a bit of a background on where you're from and how you got into art to begin with oh uh, let's see where does this stem back from all right well i'm i'm from long island new york um i wouldn't say i got into artwork probably in middle school i think i think it was uh you know i wasn't a great student but i was doing well in art and sports. Um, and I just was like, you know, I really like working on artwork and was getting good grades at it. So that's kind of what like started, if you want to call it a career, you know, back in middle school. Yeah. Um, I probably, I'd say like graphic design classes existed for the first time when I was in like ninth grade. And I just like fell in love with it as soon as I like hit the computer, could draw on it um, and just kind of took it from there. And, you know, I went, you know, there was like the, uh, you know, what what do you want to do in college? You know, questionnaires and stuff. You know, I was looking through, I'm like, oh, graphic design. That's definitely the thing. And to this day, it's just been like my passion ever since then. I know the the joke saying graphic design is my passion, but, you know, I've (laughs) always, always loved doing it um since back you know in middle school and high school and you know i was like i got into skateboarding i got into punk music and you know it's just like you want to do the logo for your friend's band you want to do skate deck graphics and you know just that whole world of art and design i just fell in love with yeah what uh, what was it that you were doodling at that time or what was inspiring you to kind of draw and uh, you know, come up with stuff around that time. Do you recall? Um, you know what it was like? I rem- I specifically remember working on like a sculpture project of like a Toy Story character. And I remember thinking how cool character design was and stuff and like the logos that went along with the movies and whatnot. So I think that's probably where it started, you know, that type of design um, yeah. just got me like into it. Cool. So obviously graphic design is your passion. So, you know, you're still, you're in love with this throughout high school, you're doodling, you're making stuff for your friends' bands and kind of envisioning uh, maybe skate decks and such. So, you know, what happens after high school? How do you continue pursuing this? Because I know I've got a lot of listeners who are into this type of thing and it always fascinates me how people have kind of have this passion and somehow figure out a way to follow it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I knew it's what I wanted to do going into college. You know, I didn't go to a fancy school. I went to community college. I, you know, I just drew all the time and learned how to use the software through my classes and whatnot and kind of developed, you know, the skill set with that. I I think the main thing to have when you want to have an art career is honestly, it's, it's the passion to create things. Um, you know, you might not be great at it at first, but, you know, you, you learn through your classes and stuff, how to use the software, how to, you know, tips and tricks to make things look better, become easier to actually design. Um, and that's kind of where it helped me, you know, take off uh, to the next level. Yeah. I'm curious in these classes, you know, what software do you remember? Like, what were you, what were you using at the time? 
I mean, I, I've been using Adobe Illustrator since high school. It just, you know, every year a new version came out and new cool stuff like, uh, you know, came about in the software that you got to use. And you're like, oh, you know, you just nerded out with that kind of stuff. Uh, Photoshop, all the, the, the design software that's just like, you know, been around forever. That's it. That's That's what I used. I mean, I guess if you go back to middle school, it was like just pen and paper and yeah. you know sculpture old school artwork before we had cell phones and you know apps yeah. and stuff like that once you got into the software side of things did you drop the pen and paper or did that always stick around you know i only recently dropped the pen and paper uh let's see 2016 when i got like um the ipad and i you know came with a pencil and you could draw on the iPad. It took some, it, there was definitely a learning curve to yeah. work on that, but I was paper and pencil up until, you know, only a few years ago. Oh, so, nice. and I, I know that like, uh, you know, drawing tablets have been around forever too. And I always used to be like, nah, I'm not, that's not real drawing. That's like you know, <laughs> a pl piece of plastic on, on glass and I could never get it. And then the iPad came out and I was like, holy shit, this just like changed my life. It changes <laughs> like, the speed at which I can do things now because you don't have to erase anything. You just hit undo. Yeah. So it, it's crazy how you want to fight technology for art, but you can't sometimes. You just had to give in. You just had yeah. to at some point. When, uh, when do you think you started developing your own style? Was it in college? You know, was it in middle school? You know, when did you start just creating on your own? <laughs> Honestly, again, I feel like, it was recently with the iPad. I mean, as a designer, you know, you you, you get out of school, you want to find a job, um, you want to basically take what you can get to get your feet wet. And for me, right out of, like at the end of college, um, I got a job at a screen printer. And that was like my first taste of like the real world of graphic design and, and getting paid for it. Um, yeah. And it was like the kind of work that you, I got through that place, you'd be like, you worked on that? Like it was like fire department logos and like <laughs> cheerleading teams and like the most random shit that you can think of. Yeah. Um, but that's what came into my job and that's what I worked on. And I did it for so many years until I was just finally like, I just want to work on my own shit. Like I only want to work on cool stuff. You know, I'm, I'm aware that I can get paid for this now and, you know, it's turning into a career. And then, you know, you get to a point where, you know, you have, for me, I had a nine to five, but after that it was just freelance and drawing and, and just doing what I wanted to do. And that's yeah. kind of where, you know, I pushed myself to where I am now is I, you know, I have a nine to five, but I want, to just work on how my name is Mark stuff, skate graphics and all that. And, and that's where I kind of developed a style where I'm like, I want to push this out in front of people and hopefully a lot will absorb it and want to, you know, hire me for this type of work. Yeah. Uh, do you remember, so this job, did you enjoy that job by the way, or it, it was okay and you just ended up getting burnt out? You know, it was cool. Cause it was like the, seeing the process of your art turned into t-shirts and yeah, sold you know and, and worn um but if you asked me to screen print a t-shirt for you right now i'd be like get the fuck out of here i like <laughs> i can't stand the thought of doing that because as as much as i was a designer for the place it was like you know uh ch in charge of everything like burning yeah. screens printing shirts uh you know going over and checking on inks and stuff so you it it taught me so much but at the same time, it made me like lose my passion for screen printing, you yeah. know, actually doing it. So that's funny. I'm thinking back, you know, is there is there something that a logo you created early on or a design or T-shirt you made that you remember just being so proud of? Um, actually, I I think the first thing that I made um, of my own personal artwork that I was like, this is the direction I want to go. It's, I did this like octopus screen printed poster 
And it was around the time we had like a hurricane and I had this idea that like the octopus got thrown out of the water and latched onto like a, uh, a lamp pole near the shore and it was like lightning was striking it and he was like climbing down it. And that's when I was like, this is the kind of shit that I want to do like all the time. Yeah, that's gnarly. That's so yeah. sick. So so you, you decide you want to freelance this and kind of go about doing your own shit. Um, you know, was that tough? Did you have clients lined up? Did you just go for it? Um, I, I mean, like I said, I still had a full time job, but um, I wasn't I wasn't taking any freelance work that I didn't want to do or that I didn't think would like help me get larger clients that I wanted to work with. Yeah. Um, so I just started hustling. Um, you know, Instagram is an amazing tool, I have to say. Um, I mean, I'll get into it, but that's where I get a lot of freelance work because it's it's a digital portfolio that is constantly updating. And yeah. people can find you, they, you know, searching for a hashtag and, and they can find a design. Oh, who made that? Let me contact him. Maybe he can do something cool for me. And that's happened to me over and over. Yeah. Um, so I'm so thankful for, you know, that platform. But yeah, yeah that, that's and that's how I that's how I stumbled across your page. And it's it's awesome how you can come across. I've came across several artists that way. And now that I think about it, you know, what the fuck did people do before? Was right. it just word of mouth? And then you you had to have a decent website and hope that somebody went there and dug through it. Yeah. And that's true. And that's it, it. It proves the point that, like, you know, now I can find these companies that I want to work with because you can like directly contact them. You can yeah. do that back in the day. You know, I can't like message world industries back in 1999 and be like, yo, can I do a graphic for you? Like right. not, they would never give you the time of day. It's totally different now. Yeah, no chance. Uh, so did you have any key clients like early on that you felt were like just super stoked to be working with or notable? Um, I mean, I, I just, I started working with some like smaller, um, board companies and it, it just kind of like, it, it kind of made, it put me out there more to yeah. other ones. Cause you know, they share it, and then a, another company sees it and another company sees it. And I just kind of tried to start creating like a network of, you know, cool brands, surf brands and skate brands and, and, uh, you know, skateboard companies that. I could possibly work with and it just kind of manifested itself into something, you know, it's crazy to think that like that, that even happened yeah. just from posting work on you know, the internet. It's crazy to think of how versatile artists like yourself have to be because you're going from creating random logos for, you know, a, a fire truck <laughs> company yeah. or something to like a crazy gnarly octopus that's meant for a skate deck or something meant for a t-shirt was there any part of that that you found like you just fucking hated working on t-shirts or you know or did you just have to force yourself to be able to work on whatever well i i definitely had a lot of work that was coming in that i was like i don't want to work on this stuff and you know it's <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of mean to say, but you like you shoot high with the pricing on something that you don't really want to work on, because if there's no passion in it, it's going to take me a while. And yeah. I'm, I'm going to go back and forth and be like, I don't know if this is right. If it's something I'm like stoked to work on. Yeah. Um, you know, it, the money almost doesn't matter sometimes. And you're just so like pumped to to create it and know that like it's going to be on boards and stuff. And, you know you get that in your hands and it's, you know, it's on your wall, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. I, you know, I, I'm more thrilled to work on and not like trying to get high prices for. Yeah. You mentioned that you're using the iPad. I'm curious. And for the, for the listeners who are creators and kind of going about the graphic design thing, what equipment do you use these days and like super rely on? Um, you know, I have, I have my iMac, my, iPad and my laptop and I basically if I'm sitting at my desk creating something um you know I'll I'll use the iMac I'll pop back and forth with you know images and uh you know the iPad and drawing based on having those two 
right now, if I'm like upstairs and I get an idea, I'll just pop on the laptop, you know, go through Pinterest or you know, Google or something and, and just try to start pulling some like reference images and then just start drawing right there. So it really just depends where I'm at, you know, yeah. if I'm traveling for work and I'm on the airplane. That's it. It's iPad. There's no internet. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head for stuff. So, yeah. Is it still Illustrator and Photoshop? Uh, it's the equivalent versions of that, like for the iPad, they have Procreate, um, they yeah. actually have Illustrator for the iPad. I just haven't used it yet. I was using Adobe Draw, which it's all basically the same thing. Gotcha. Um, it's just the iPad equivalent of the design software. So you were obviously super into skateboard, and, and for the listeners, you can't see this, but behind Matt, he's got five or six really rad skateboards that he's designed, along with his very first skateboard, he told me before we started, which is dope. So obviously, that's a big passion of yours. So when do you land your first skateboard kind of freelancing job? I'm sure you were stoked about it. Yeah. I mean, it was only, God, I guess it was like a few years ago at this point, point. Um, and I don't... I think they contacted me on this based on because I was like posting skate art just for the fun of it, hoping yeah. that someone would see something. Um, and, you know, as an artist, you like put a graphic up and you just write like design for sale and hope someone bites on it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just something I was doing on the side for fun. And you hope that they wanted to grab, you know, grab that design. And then I got a message from another skate company and they were like, Oh, could you do a graphic for us? And it was like a, uh, a double board graphic where the, the graphic was split across, um, both decks. And I was just like, yeah, I, I didn't even ask him like how much they were going to pay. I just was like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we went back and forth on a couple of things and it just, it came out sick. And I was like, that's it. I'm this is I'm not taking anything else. <laughs> I just want to do this stuff. <laughs> just skateboards. Which was it one of is it one of the ones behind you or what was on it? Uh no. I mean I can grab it real quick. Hold on. Okay. I mean, and of course it's an octopus, but Oh I'm... rad, dude. Oh man, that's sick. Yeah. Hell yeah. So when you get that thing in hand, I mean, how fucking stoked were you to have your art on an actual skateboard? Uh, it's that's it. It's like that's what I do this for. Is yeah. Seeing that or, you know, uh, the company posting that the decks are in and then like the pros are riding them and you see them in like, you know, the skate video or something You're like, oh, shit, I did that. Like, that's that's it. That's, that's awesome. For. Yeah, that's fucking rad, man. So. You're making skate decks. You're really passionate about, uh, you know, uh, an octopus. And uh, walk us through how you kind of get in contact with, hi, my name is Mark. I'm assuming probably uh, Dylan. So I've had Dylan on the podcast, by the way. And for the listeners who who haven't checked that out, definitely go back and listen to that. Uh, Dylan Anderson, brand manager for Hi, My Name is Mark. Um, so kind of walk us through how you end up getting involved with uh, Hymnim. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, believe it or not. Really? <laughs> Again. Yeah. You know what? It was like, I want to say it was probably 2016. Um, they posted like, Hey, what do you guys want to see coming up this year? And I like commented like me doing a graphic for you guys. <laughs> that would be really sudden, cool. I got a couple <laughs> likes on like a couple octopus designs I had by them. And I was like, Oh shit, he liked my stuff. Uh -huh. Um, and then I think it was a DM or somehow he, uh, Dylan emailed me and, you know, asked if, you know, if I wanted to do some t-shirt graphics and I, again, dropped everything and was like, yeah, for sure. This, yeah. Let's throw some ideas around. So I think the first one I did was the, um, the banana. Was it? Remember. Yes. I have yeah. that. That's one that of my favorites. My, my first one, the banana peel. Uh, and then after that, it was like, you know, uh, either Dylan would be like, oh, I was thinking about doing something like this, or I would just like do designs and send them to him or sketches, you know, anything. I would like email him, you know, three lines of text with ideas and he'd be like, ah, oh, no, yep, yeah, let's try that, you know, and then <laughs> I'd take it from there. So 
um, I, I, I wanted to, you know, get his opinion on even the thought of what I was going to do before I started drawing anything. And, yeah. uh, you know, after the first or second round of shirt graphics was when like the deck came in and I had, we had talked about like doing an eighties, uh, themed skate deck and I kind of sketched something up and he was like, you know what? I've, I've had this idea for a while to do like the, the Tony Hawk board, but never really, you know, put it into an actual sketch or anything or been able to nail it down. So I was like, I'm making this my, like, I'm committed to getting this right. <laughs> and we probably went back and forth on that sketch like four or five times um, and just getting the line work down perfectly. And then it just, it just came together and I was so pumped how it came out. Yeah, so, and I think that's when I first either came across your page or found out who you were because, you know, those skateboards launched, there were just two different versions. Is that right? Yeah, the blue and the pink one. What were they uh, limited out of? I can't remember the, the run. Uh, there weren't too many. It, it says it, I, it's 100, I'm pretty sure. That's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. Okay. So, and he, he was like, I know that they they were signing like a handful of them. And yeah. I just, I, I emailed Dylan. I was like, please, please let me get that, one of those. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess I should back up a tad. Did you know Blink and Mark prior? Were you a fan? Yeah. I mean, I, let's see. I bought the Dude Ranch CD. It was probably my first one back when it came out. So um, I go pretty decently far back with being a Blink fan too. So yeah, of course that like, was over the top exciting for me yeah. finding out that it was him. Um, I have a friend who's like super into blank. Um, Sam, what's up? And, uh, <laughs> I think we worked together and he either, he showed me the brand or, you know, we were talking about it and that's how I was like, Oh shit, that's, you know, that's more coppice, you know? Yeah. So I was, I was so pumped. And, you know, once we start, I started like doing the, graphics you know yeah what's what's your favorite blink album is it dude ranch you know i it's like it's hard to have a favorite um because each one is like a different kind of nostalgia for me you know i love all the new stuff but yeah like dude ranch takes me back to like warp tour and stuff like that yeah um, so yeah i would probably say that would be the top for me yeah, I know. I always say that it's so tough to pick one because each one takes you back to like a particular point in your life or yeah. certain memories and everything like that. So they all have their own special place. OK, that's rad. Uh, yeah. So so these decks come out. This is this, to me, you know, talking to you, this seems like your dream project. I mean, how fucking cool was that to come together, put together a throwback, you know, uh, cheers to the Tony Hawk 80s skate decks with Mark Hoppus's brand of Blink-182. I mean, how was that? Yeah, I mean, I was, I think I posted, like, this is a childhood dream, you know, I, you know I, I grew up, like, watching the X Games and Tony Hawk, and, you know, granted, this, like, this was, like, from the 80s era, I still, like, you know, loved him as a skateboarder, and yeah. to be like, all right, so it's skating, it's Tony Hawk, it's Blink-182, it's graphic design, it was, yeah. like, everything I could have imagined, so, yeah. and then, like, when I said, uh, you know, I, I want, I was hoping I could get it signed. He like wrote me like a, Mark wrote me like a personal note on the board too. So I was like, ah, oh, that's fucking rad. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I was playing the, so they came back out with the Tony Hawk pro skater one and two. They did a remake of that. And in my very small amount of spare time, sometimes I like to play PlayStation. And <laughs> uh, I got that a couple months back and I was creating my little uh, Tony Hawk character and I came across the board and it reminded me i hadn't seen that board the tony hawk version in so long oh my god and as soon as i saw it i'm like oh my gosh this is just so iconic bring back brings back so many memories and then i just instantly thought about the hi my name is mark one and how it was inspired by that it's just so fucking rad it's funny it like it got me in like i wasn't uh, i skated in like the oh well, i still do but i like started skating in the 90s um so I was never really like a Powell Peralta, old school dog town, like that kind of guy. Yeah. And then when this happened, 
I started like following all the groups on Facebook just to see like the renditions of the decks and stuff from back then. Yeah. It's crazy like how that that brought that together. Did you take that board out for a stroll or is that puppy Hell hanging no. on the wall? Yeah, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> Definitely not the signed one. I don't know if you got one of each, but <laughs> I do. Yeah, the blue one's not signed. If I ever skated one, it would be that one, but yeah, gotcha. no. Those are they get dusted off regularly. <laughs> To behind glass, UV yeah. <laughs> UV protected glass. Uh, that's awesome. So so the skateboards were a success. I mean, those go pretty quick. And so uh, you know, how does the the thing continue? You, you just keep working with Dylan on creating more shirts. Yeah. Uh, ever since then, it's just kind of been like you know similar. If he's got ideas, he lets me know. Or you know, like recently. It was like the decades, um, like the one you're wearing, you know, we yeah. did like the 70s theme and then the 80s theme. Um, so it was just kind of like, you know, let's let's throw some 80s and some 70s ideas together for it. And, you know, that was it. I just started like sending stuff over. Yeah, I love the one that is it's like those like super bright 80s colors, like pink and yellow, the the octopus on the beach. I just got the sticker pack. There's actually a sticker of it as well, which is rad. Yep. Yeah, I got that. Just got those in. Yeah, that's that's up there um, with my favorite graphics from, you know, from the brand. I think yeah. the uh, the like flash tattoo one that I did recently. Oh, yeah. Definitely up there for me because I never really like I know a lot of people have their own like specific style and I have that for the most part, but sometimes I just like to do shit that I'm like, it's just challenging. I've never yeah. done flash tattoo art or, you know, like a lithograph, uh, you know, design. And I kind of try to bring all that into these graphics. Yeah. When I saw that one, I was like, Oh my gosh, that would be a perfect tattoo. I mean, it's just exactly like a perfect, like I picture it on like a sailor. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> just right there on the arm uh yeah so that's your favorite one you've made for them yeah um i actually have the uh i mean the 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 80s tony hawk one's definitely up there because it was the skate deck and i I have it tattooed on my leg now so oh really i must really like it yeah ah yeah you'll have to send me a picture of that so when i post this sometimes i get some cool pictures from the guests and it's kind of rad to to kind of post it along with the episode so shoot me a picture of that if you don't mind i'd like to to show that off yeah, definitely. Um, do you have a favorite one that maybe didn't make the cut? Uh, I'm trying to think. You know what? I don't really, because honestly, the ones that didn't make the cut were kind of not great. So I'm like, okay, all right. I'm like, I feel it. You know, when when he kind of like rejects an idea, I'm like, yeah, you know, I wasn't like that into that one anyway. <laughs> Sometimes I like to just get feedback on designs. Yeah. yeah. Um, a fu- there's a funny story about the flash tattoo one um <laughs> originally i tried to do that like a couple years ago and we talked about like <laughs> having like a panther attacking like an octopus mm. like a real old school looking like tattoo yeah. like that and i remember like being i was at a like at a show and i had a text from dylan and he was like Dude, you can't unsee it when you see it, but look at your sketch again. And <laughs> it looked like the the panther was, let's say, coming at the octopus from behind. <laughs> and I was That'd like, be a oh, weird baby. Shit. Yeah, we can't do that. So that's hilarious. That was, that was like the story of the original idea for that one. That I finally was like, all right, I'm gonna make this family friendly, and you know. It, it just has a trident now instead of being, you know, yeah, attacked and, by a panther. Yeah, I love hearing that you're just so so you know able to bounce ideas off of Dylan because he's so fucking rad and he's been around for a long time, man. He did Atticus and Macbeth, and so that's really cool to me the relationship it seems like you guys have where you know you're totally down sending him ideas and kind of accepting constructive criticism and all that yeah. good stuff. That's yeah, pretty... I I listened to that that one that the podcast with him and that was I, it was so cool to like get his background and everything. Yeah, I, well I appreciate that. It, it, I mean, I was just blown away. I mean, he's known Tom since middle school. Yeah, you know, known Mark forever, and it was super interesting to hear. You know, here he is, their friend, and then obviously they've split <laughs> multiple times now. Right. So. 
Super interesting uh, perspective there. That's pretty crazy. I was wanting to ask you, you know, this is something that just blows my mind with, hi, my name is Mark, and I've been rocking it for years, is, you know, how do you continue to find ways to get creative with just that octopus <laughs> logo? I've been asked that so many times. It's funny because, like, <laughs> a lot of my own personal stuff has octopus in it. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, like I'm going to run out of ideas one day because there's just so much you could do with it. But yeah. I, I'm actually working on a few right now for uh, him, Nim. So uh, they're still, they still exist. The ideas still exist. So, you know, for yeah. now we'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing that every time they drop a new line, I'm just thinking they have got to run out of ideas <laughs> for this because every shirt typically is, you know, a large octopus on the chest. Yeah. And you would think you'd be able to, you would run out of ideas at some point, but no, you guys do a great job. And then what's crazy is, you know, when I stumbled across your page, not only are you pumping out rad octopus shit for him, them, but you've got tons of your own octopus stuff going on. So you're full of octopus ideas, man. Yeah. I, uh, it's, it's crazy to, to think that I, have that across so many platforms and can still think of ideas i mean thank god for pinterest and the internet you just can like you can go for hours trying to get ideas for things and it's it's crazy how the most random shit can give you inspiration for a design yeah but that's, that's awesome man <laughs> yeah did have you met mark or did you get a chance to go to blink shows since you've been working with them uh i've been to blink shows but i haven't no, I have never, I have never met him. <laughs> okay. Maybe one day. Yeah. Uh, get that blue one signed. Yeah, if, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, man. Well, I think I'm going to get into some of these, uh, fast paced questions, man, rapid fire. And then I'm going to get you out of here if that's cool. Yeah. Shoot. So, uh, dream client. Oh, dream client. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I want to say like any skate company from the nineties that I had as like a first deck, you know, like yeah. world industries or, or one of those, um, just to come full circle on that. <laughs> yeah. Is what other like bands are you into, by the way, are there other bands you'd love to work for? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm big on like skate punk too. So, you know, Pennywise, Bad Religion, uh, you know, uh, AFI, Descendants, stuff like that. I'd love to do something for one of them. Fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, you need to get you need to get in touch with Mr. T-Shirt, man. He reps Bad Religion. I've had him on the podcast as well. Yeah. And he's, he's usually looking out for rad artists who are, you know, up and coming and hustling and doing their thing. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely hit him up if you haven't. Uh, favorite Blink song all time? <sighs> Let's see. This is tough. I know. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> uh, you know what? I want to say Josie. Okay. Very respectable. Dude Ranch. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious. Do you have any advice for maybe up and coming graphic designers or people who are trying to get into this business? Uh, yeah. Um, kind of like what I, I mentioned before is, you know, you you have the passion to create and the hustle to just get your work out there. Yeah. Um, if, you know, if it's something you really want to get into, like an industry you really want to get into, just create art for it. And, you know, now that we have these platforms, put it out there. Um, you know, don't, don't go crazy about like, you know, getting the highest price you can for your artwork. You know, if, if it's something you just are passionate about and you want to get, the money will come after that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I, I appreciate that. Appreciate you sharing that. Um, okay, this is something I ask guests, and I actually did an entire episode on it. But um, so hypothetically, house is on fire. You've created the logo for the fire truck company that's going to come <laughs> <laughs> put it out. Family safe, kids safe, pets safe, everybody's safe, of course. But you can grab one item, collectible or just something you cherish. What are you grabbing on the way out? I mean, it's I. It would, it'd have to be the uh, the 80s deck with the Mark, you know, signature. The Mark signature? It. Yeah, that kind of encompasses everything that's in this basement right now. Yeah. All, all my, like, career's work is that deck right there. So, yeah, I think that'd be the one. 
That's awesome. Yeah, I was thinking if 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 you were going to pick one, it would either have to be that or you've got your very first skateboard behind yeah. you. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool as well, but I would grab the one signed by Mark, to be honest. <laughs> the, the only reason I'm also not picking the, the first deck is because it's like a reissue. If it were the actual board oh, okay. Okay. that I skated, yep. um, which I actually, I had that cut in my original deck. I had like a piece of it. I had my wedding ring made out of it. No shit. So, so I do technically have that forever. Wow. I lose the ring, yeah. That's crazy. How the hell? I mean, that's an interesting thing. Where do you find a company that does that? There is a company that made like, it's like half it, the inside's wood and the outside is like, you know, whatever metal you yeah. pick. And my wife sent them the deck and he made the ring out of it. Wow. And, you know, the inside looks like the rings, like, you know, like the rings of a skate deck. And then the outside is like black. So, you know, it's durable. It's not just a piece of wood. Huh, that's rad. Okay, yeah. So, dude, I appreciate your time. This was super rad. I want to give you a second to plug uh, your stuff. He's at MSX Graphics. Uh, it's G R A F I X on Instagram. And then tell us about I know you've got a Netsy shop where you've got some rad shit and octopus t shirts and the whole nine yards. So, uh, take a minute and let us know where we can find you at. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, uh, it's MSX Studio if you're on Etsy. So you just search for that. It'll come up. It's got, you know, all my t-shirts, stickers, posters, uh, you know, like limited run screen printed stuff. Cool. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. This was such a pleasure. I appreciate your time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was Matt Schneff. Definitely check him out on Instagram. He's behind a lot of super rad octopus designs. Uh, I'll talk to you soon, dude. This was great. Awesome. Thanks for having me. No problem.